Who would have thought that a widespread crypto mining malware could be so cute? I mean, it's called Cute Boy. It makes me think of like some kind of a fluffy puppy. How could that possibly be bad? Well, it turns out that Cute Boy just happens to be the name that was given to a malware campaign that has been targeting the NPM JavaScript repository for the past couple of months now by creating thousands of unique users that can then publish thousands of malicious packages to NPM. We can see more details about this on cuteboy.info, which was a site that was created to track this threat actor, all of their users and packages. Uh, so we can see that so far, 1,027 user accounts have been associated with this campaign, as well as 1,283 packages. And if we scroll through some of these packages that are listed on the site, most of them are still up. I mean, all of these, it seems like that were just published a week ago. Oh, there's one that was taken down. Uh, but most of these are still up. So like if we actually uh, just go to a random one like this here and we see it's available on NPM, click through to the link. And there we go, it is still here. So yeah, you can see that this package name is just a bunch of random letters, right? I mean, this just looks like somebody's cat walked across the keyboard to enter in the package name. And same thing for the collaborator. So the user that creates this, same thing is going on. It's just like a bunch of random letters. And of course, all of these are just bots. The hacker has completely automated this process of creating the user and then having them upload a uh, package to NPM and it's automated using Selenium and MailTM for uh, the mail authentication. So if you aren't familiar with Selenium, it's basically just a browser automation framework that, well, lets you automate anything that you would do in the browser, right? I mean, they say that's it, but it's actually really, really powerful because if you think about it, these days, pretty much everything is done in the browser. And unless websites uh, have ways, you know, things like captures and stuff to try to defeat bots, there's really not a whole lot that's preventing someone from just using Selenium to automate that process. Cause it's not utilizing APIs. Um, you know, with d different websites, they will let you create bots. Like if you think of Reddit, for example, they let you create bots uh, and you're just working with their API, but that kind of locks down what you're able to do. Like for example, I don't think Reddit or Instagram would let you create a bunch of bots that put likes on posts, right? Cause that would sort of be a way of literally hacking the algorithm. But if you were to use something like Selenium, there's, well, there are still a bunch of ways that they could stop you, but if you get really clever with it, like if you're using a bunch of proxies and you know maybe you have accounts that were email verified to and have some karma to make them look more legit, then maybe you could do this. And you could do it in such a way where it'd be very, very difficult to differentiate between a bot and a real human being. So yeah, that kind of automation can be done with a framework like Selenium and it'll just have the browser automatically open up a web page like this. So this is actually the like sign up page for NPM and you can see that all they're asking you to do is enter a username, enter an email address and a password and then they send you uh, like an account activation code to this email address. And the whole reason you see so many sites asking for an email or sometimes a phone number to text you a code to create your account is to cut down on people just spam creating thousands and thousands of accounts. But the thing is, email verification is really not that good. At least not if you get really strict about what domains or you know what email services you let people use because obviously there's these services like mail.tm uh, where you can just get like a random email address at a random domain or services like Gorilla Mail. This is probably the most popular uh, kind of service like this. So you see your address is just random. In fact, you can make the um, prefix, whatever you want, the part before the at, and for the domains, they have several different ones that you can choose from. So uh, 
like maybe shark lasers, the more well-known one is blocked, but like spam for me dot, uh, or spam for dot me, maybe that isn't blocked. Now, in all likelihood, if anybody is blocking these temp mail services, they probably are going to be blocking gorilla mail because that's the most popular one. But there's dozens of these out there, okay? It's, it's gonna be pretty tricky for you to block all of them unless you do something like only allow people to use gmail.com or yahoo.com, but then you're gonna end up pissing off a lot of other users because there's people who host their own email, for example. Uh, so you have to allow their domain as well. And ultimately, it's a futile thing to try to just block these temp mail services because somebody could actually just create their own, right? Like maybe you go through every single hacker forum and spammer forum and figure out all the free services they're using. Uh, but making your own probably wouldn't even cost very much to do. So um, of course you would need hosting, right? That could be cheaper than $5. Use my Volta referral link in the description of the video below, but not for mail spam. Uh, Volta is already paranoid enough about opening port 25, but please use my referral link if you need hosting for something legit. Uh, and you can save money with that. But the point is hosting is cheap. And maybe you didn't know this, but a lot of these domains are actually pretty cheap too. So things like .com, uh, .org, and .net, usually those are a little bit more expensive uh, because they're more desirable, right? Like these are .com, .org, .net, especially .com. Those were like the original TLDs, I think back in the mid 80s is when they were developed. And then later on, things like .biz and like .info and .me came along, even though they all work the same way. But if you go to like GoDaddy or some, any place where you buy domains from, you're probably going to see that when they're ending with .biz, .info, they're a lot cheaper. So you could pick up a bunch of these uh, and it wouldn't even break the bank. And yeah, that, that would let you just create, again, unlimited number of prefixes. Um, and then you can create an unlimited number for every suffix. And all of those suffixes would then have to be blocked. But if you're using a private one, then obviously you have more control over you. You can add more domains or just not send spam from it in the first place and they won't get blocked. But the point I'm making with that whole tangent is just that if you're trying to rely on email verification to cut down on spammers, then it's really not going to work because only the laziest hackers are not gonna be able to get bypass this. Personally, I think CAPTCHAs are a good middle ground for preventing spammers without requiring something more personal to collect like a phone number. Now, at this case, you're probably wondering what the heck these packages are actually installing, right? Aren't they malware? Well, yeah, they are. And if we just go and take a look at the GitHub repo forum, what are they installing? Oh, they're installing XMR rig, of course, which if you didn't know is a stealth uh, XMR miner, a stealth Monero miner. So not necessarily malware in its own right. I mean, you could use XMR rig on your own computer and mine Monero for yourself. It wouldn't be malware in that case, but if somebody installed it without your consent and they have it using your resources to mine Monero for them, then it's a problem. Uh, and of course, it's desirable for hackers to use this or, or they desire to use this because XMR is an amazingly private cryptocurrency. So from my perspective, I guess the Monero maximalist perspective, this choice of using Monero is great, right? The victims of this malware are contributing to Monero's hash rate, although, of course, unknowingly and definitely not consensually. And if law enforcement chooses to pursue this hacker, then the Monero blockchain may get a free penetration test if law enforcement tries well, tracing the transactions to unmask the hacker. So if a crypto miner is gonna get installed on someone's computer, I guess it's best that it is XMR rig, mining Monero. But how can you, the end user who doesn't necessarily want to be forced into mining Monero for some hacker, just avoid this whole situation? Well, it's pretty easy. Don't install random NPM packages 
uh, on your computer. Or if you want to install them just to try them out, maybe do it in a virtual environment, okay? Don't do it in a way where it's gonna be more difficult for you to remove the packages and maybe compromise a production system. Just like in the past, how I recommended, you always pay very close attention to what you're installing in NPM or from any package repository because creating malicious packages with a similar name to a legit package is a very common technique to trick hackers into installing malware. But in this case, they're not even doing that. They literally just smash their face on their keyboard to name the packages. So I don't know how anyone is looking at this and mistaking it for something else. Uh, you know, maybe they're thinking it's some heck new framework and they're like, oh my God, I've got to download it and try it. Uh, no. Don't do that, and uh, you won't end up mining Monero for somebody else. Like and comment to hack the algorithm, follow me on Odyssey, and have a great day.